And welcome to another episode of the Sartorio and Geek Podcast by Webster Style, where we talk about bow ties, comic books, and everything between. I'm your host, Webster Style, the man, the voice, the fragrance, coming back one more time, and we're back a little bit late, been a bit under the weather, you can probably hear from my voice, but just, let's just jump right into the download. Now, at the time of recording this particular episode, we are just finishing up the beta of a game which kind of came out of nowhere from Capcom, at least the announcement of the game came out of nowhere a few months ago, and that is of the game Exo Primal. So it is this, I would say, mashup between Exo suits and uh, hordes of dinosaurs. So imagine a uh, Left 4 Dead with Exo suits and Raptors uh, to some extent, or even maybe more so. Because uh, they have different classes, well, I'll get to that. So that's what I'll, I'll make it out to be to you know give a general synopsis of of what the game is like. Well, I recently sat down and played the beta they had over the weekend, and I have to say that I'm not sure if what to expect from a beta because it's a beta. I enjoy playing the game. I would love to see more. Some of the updated trailers they fleshed out for it have given more of a potential story for the single player campaign, which I'm always looking forward to. I'm hoping that this doesn't or isn't just a bare bones single player campaign and they tack on a bunch of uh, DLC and this is more or less the attempt to get into the games as a service market. But if they are, they're doing really good with that by dropping it day one on Xbox Game Pass when it comes out in July, I believe. But getting back to the demo, I enjoyed playing the demo. The tutorial was pretty easy to understand if you play these sort of uh, third person over the shoulder action games, uh, navigating the different uh, types of mechs because the tutorial gives you um, instructions on how to use all the assault ones, the helper ones, as well as, and I know the helper isn't what it's called as well as the tank um, mech suit. So you got a pretty good instructional period with each one to understand how all of them worked and how all of them played and also as far as how they benefit your teammates or your squad as well. And I see it really, especially if you are getting online with a group of friends, I can see that uh, coordination really coming in handy when you're facing a horde of dinosaurs so I'm looking to see how that really plays out in a real live gameplay now the outside of tutorial they did have some online gameplay matches which were okay as far as I was concerned uh, I knew it was a, a beta so I really wasn't that invested and it wasn't like I was playing with people that I knew either so I really just hopped in there, played for a few minutes to get a sense of it, because it was more or less you were in the squad together, both teams, and whichever squad completed the objectives the fastest won. So everybody's pretty much fighting in the same pit, and whoever killed the dinosaurs the fastest, their team won. So pretty much is what it was. So again, nothing really spectacular, but it was a decent experience. And again, for something that's dropping in day past gate, I mean, day pass i can't talk sickness uh the game pass on day one is definitely a game i'll get into and i'll play um and i guess i'll see once it comes out there and i made a play it is it something i would really recommend for a full price now i'm assuming that this is dropping at a uh, 59.99 price point not a 69.99 price point but we shall see uh when that comes out so that's my take on exo prime at least that beta let's get up to short takes now we talked about tetris uh, a few weeks ago and the fact that they're having a tetris movie there's something about 80s and 90s tech now since we've done apple and microsoft stories to death now today i saw a trailer for blackberry yes there is a movie discussing the origins of blackberry aka crackberry look for those that are too young to know is before everybody had an iphone pretty much and 
it took me by surprise. I'm like, wow. And it stars Jay Bushnell and a bunch of other people that we, we've seen. And it looks interesting. I want to see it. I am, as someone who has always been a, a techie and especially who cut their teeth on personal technology around that era, BlackBerry Research in Motion is, I've never heard the origins of that company. I've never heard the it discussed or talked about so as a techie guy i'm very interested to see how it really started just from the trailer i'm like oh i gotta watch this like seriously this looks really really awesome so that's my take on that i can't wait for that short take there have been a lot of other trailers come out uh since the last time we were together they released they as in disney released the full trailer for the little mermaid which I liked, I guess. I don't know. I I am soured on Disney's live action remakes at the moment. I mean, it looks good. It, it looks it definitely gonna be something to take the kids to. Uh, just in general, I am I'm not big on a lot of live action Disney at the moment. I don't know. It's weird. Um, a lot of movies in general just aren't striking my fancy as they would have been in the past few years. So maybe that's that is as well. Maybe I'm becoming an old curmudgeon. Who knows? Uh, but so the little meme definitely looks like something to be interesting. It'll be fun for the whole family when it comes out. The summer's just packed, man. I hope um I hope the, the theaters do well. Uh, this is what the real first real summer summer after after uh, COVID. So I'm hoping everything bounces back uh, so things could get somewhat healthy as far as the industry is concerned. So those are my short takes. Uh, next up, we're going to do a bit of a break, a bit of a dip dip from the norm. We have an interview to share with you guys. So I had the opportunity to talk with uh, Miss Carissa Grant. Uh, she is the co-writer, co-creator of a comic series that is currently about to drop on Kickstarter with issue four in April called uh, Worthy chaos in this case is redemption and it is a series that if you have watched supernatural or any sort of uh jekyll and hyde chasing monsters grim sort of uh series in your lifetime and loved it this is the book for you so check out the interview then when we come back we'll talk about the fragrance of the week What's going on, everybody? It's Webster Style, the man, the voice, the fragrance. And we're here with Carissa Grant of Worthy Chaos, a new comic that's been out, which has a Kickstarter starting on April the 18th for issue number three, right? Uh, four. Four, sorry. Issue okay. number four. Uh, we're going to talk to her today just about, you know, where the Worthy Chaos come from, her journey into comics, and what she sees in the future uh, for Worthy Chaos and any other endeavors that she has. Carissa, how are you? Well, Carissa, good. Are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. This is great. Well, thank you for joining. Um, where did Worthy Chaos come from? What was the inspiration for it? So this was actually written between uh, me and a co-writer. We were actually role players, and I came up with the story like 17 years ago, and I role played for about 15 before I actually found her. And then when I finally found her to ask her to take the role, we wrote about 10 novels worth of. Wow. Yeah. And uh, five of those novels are this series uh, one um, redemption. And then the other five is a spinoff. And we're still writing for series two and a prequel. So there's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> but yeah, this is us. Um, it was a, uh, it wasn't meant to go anywhere. It was just complete fun. We right. fell in love with the characters, fell in love with the story. But it, when we were done with series one, we we're like, this is really too good to not, you know, share. Plus, we, we really want to see our characters come alive on page. So uh, that's mainly the inspiration of the making it into a comic book. Okay. Now, with that, um, you were saying before you've only been doing comics for how long now? I started about six months ago, October. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah, we ju I just jumped into it. I told my car, I'm going to make these into comics. And she said, go ahead. And then I kind of jumped into it. I hired an artist. And then I, the night I hired an artist, uh, I just, I realized I didn't know how to make a script. So <laughs> the next day I had to get up, watch a few videos. I'm like, okay, I could do this. And then uh, I think in two days I had script one written out. Wow. And 
Yeah, and then I realized it was actually two scripts because I forgot that dialogue needs to <laughs> be shortened. Um, my letter was like, do you realize people want to see the art? And I was like, yeah, I guess that's slightly important. So I cut it in half and then I had two issues. So <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> yeah. That's what YouTube, love it or hate it, it it's oh, always yeah. a great resource for figuring out how to do something. Oh, it was fantastic. I watched like two videos and I was like, all right, I'm good to go. Like it's the best how-to you can find is, is YouTube. So. Now, were you or are you into comics at all? Yeah, when I was younger, my older brother got me into Ghost Rider, and um, then on my own, I got into Batman. So mainly it was Batman and anything Dick Grayson related for Nightwing and whatever. Um, but Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, Danny, the original, all of that was like my favorite. Um, and then I was into it for about, I want to say like 10 years, and then it, I don't know, it just I think there was one huge crossover that I just couldn't afford it at the time, so I was like... Yeah kind of got away from it and and then uh, I really didn't get much into it but I always liked it like I still watch like the superhero movies and everything but collecting comics itself was kind of on the wayside I still have all of them I have boxes um but this was a, a whole new adventure that I, I hadn't even thought about <laughs> until until it happened and what kind of what happened was when because it was a role-playing thing between the two of us it wasn't like a novel, I mean, it was novel length. It was actually longer than an average. They were like 90,000 words each, but it was written between two people. Right. So it wasn't something you could just print and and that. So I was like, you know what? We love reading it. I, I read it all the time. I'll just print it out for us. And I said, let me look up an artist just to do a cover for us. I'll print it out of like, you know, there's a couple of sites you can do it at. And um, that was my reminder to come here. <laughs> and, um, I said, these look really cartoony. I don't know if that's what you want for our characters on the cover. And she's like, yeah, cartoony is fine. I was like, you know, make a really good comic book if you're going to do cartoony. And that's kind of, you know, that night I went out and found the artist. <laughs> so. Got you. Yeah, I was going to ask you which Ghost Rider, because, you know, those of us of a certain age, like when I got into comics, I was introduced to Ghost Rider via Danny Keach in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I learned of Johnny Blaze, you know, through yeah. that. And I was like, so you, you got to ask. And then even, you know, those a bit younger uh, with the latest incarnation. And I forget his name with the car. And I love him. Well, I don't even so know. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you got to ask. Uh, it's like every generation has their own Ghost Rider now, which I think is oh, really yeah. awesome. So yeah, I had I was, to ask that I was, I was Danny. And then my and then when Spirits of Vengeance came in, my brother's like, "Oh, I have the original," so he was into Johnny Blaze before right. I even knew he existed. And then I, I had to get Spirits of Vengeance and and some of the original, but uh, yeah, it was Danny for me. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Now I see that you you utilize at least looking at synopses and some of the videos. You utilize a lot of um, Egyptology um, yeah. in your book. Um, is that something you're very passionate about or you just thought, hey, this would be really good to, to incorporate that into the book, into the role play? I actually study a lot of religions. Like it's actually a lot of, um, like the angels and demons that are in there are all from mm -hmm. scripture and okay. they all have their proper duties or whatever they would normally do in scripture. Okay. Like like um, the main character, Serafina is an angel descendant. Her father is Ramil, which is actually the angel that judges souls. And that's kind of where it started from because with that, I, I don't know why, but 17 years ago, I was thinking, what would he carry those souls in? And that's when I created uh, this little this little weapon thing that is our logo now. And it holds the pa the souls, and he would take them to heaven and get them judged. And then um, Draven's uh, demon descendant, his father, is the chaos soul, Asmin, and he would try to steal the power of souls from him. So that's kind of what started like the whole war between heaven and hell. So it's... So it's heaven, it's hell, it's, you know, it's Catholic, Christianity, um, and then we have uh, uh, Anubis, and um, and later in the series, in series two, it's actually more religions. It's Celtic, it's Greek, it's okay. it's more of the Egyptians, so it's kind of like they're all going to war on either side. So, um, but uh, yeah, he's not he's not bad in this, um, he's, he's just uh, being used. But because uh, everyone's like, Anubis isn't a bad guy. I was like, no, he's not bad. He's being controlled and and he's going to figure it out and side with our characters later on. So but everyone, this became a fan favorite. Like we did not expect uh, him to just be like everyone wants everything Anubis. 
um this is my emotional support nubis but um <laughs> <laughs> i everyone's like i have so much merch for nubis now mostly because we wanted it and then everyone's like oh now we want it so um but now we have covers with him and and um he gets more and more into it like in book two he follows them do you know i don't know if you know resident evil the games or at yes. all so you know, if you know mr x or a nemesis how it tracks them where that's what anubis winds up doing in book uh three he actually stalks them through whatever um and so that's it and this one he's just kind of chasing them as he's being commanded to do so but uh yeah so but he became very popular <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I love one of the things personally I've always loved is I loved how writers and creators um, in, in many different mediums have been able to really utilize religious iconography, religious stories to really craft um, very intricate detail, but also in many effects, brand new stories with sort of existing characters even going more so into lore and history than most of us even know. One of the things I, and this is way back in the 90s, um, the run on Vampirella, they, they delved a lot in that heaven and hell, Lilith. And I love that because at that time in the 90s, that was something I'd never seen before in comics. And obviously you see a bit more of it now, but I, I love, I love it more so because that attention to detail that creators take with that sort of source material. It is not, it's not ever fluff. There's a lot of details, a lot of research that goes into it. And I always take my hats off uh, when creators do that because it, it takes a lot and there's a lot of respect for that source material in that regards as well. So I'm, I'm really interested to, to see more uh, with that, especially checking out where the chaos. But I'm gonna ask you this though, um, how has the Kickstarter experience been for you so far? So we've only had one major uh, Kickstarter. I did like a, I want to call it a soft opening with an original artist that kind of screwed us over. We lost like five grand with him and yeah, we had to start over, but it was worth it because him screwing us over got us to the artist that we truly love. Gotcha. And we had him redo one and I lost some money on it, but now the, the book is exactly how we want it. It's how we want them to look and, and all that stuff. So the, the major campaign that we just finished about two weeks ago, it went really well. We had 77 backers and we brought in about $2,800, which is way more than I thought. Now I'm very nervous for the next one because it's the first single issue. That was one through three. Okay. And this, one's, this one's a single issue. So they already read it. Will they come back for more? You know, well, I've gotten very good feedback on it. I've actually had some people beg me to, you know, to, to release it as soon as possible. <laughs> so that's a good sign, but it's still, you know, a single issue. And before it was a leap of faith, so now if they come back, it'll it'll prove that people actually like it. So that's what we're hoping for. I will say this much from someone who is back comics and has waited <laughs> two years between issues. They will keep coming back if they like your material. Yeah. Trust me. I am well, one of those people who will keep coming back. <laughs> um, we have uh, we have very loyal readers that, that have read it so far, seem to love it. And we're releasing about every other month. So uh, like it's April 18th, June 20th. Uh, August 13th and then in October we're releasing uh, kind of a double last issue for book one and the the trade paperback for all of them put together uh, okay. for Halloween because Halloween marks uh, three years that I've been with my co-writer and three years and one year that we've been doing comics and one year with our artist so um, it's kind of like plus it's Halloween and we're, right. <laughs> so exactly. you have to have it on Halloween um, and we do have a little bit um, different lore. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Supernatural. It's kind yeah. of. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, then you should read this book. <laughs> but um, it's uh, it's in their universe pretty much. Like, in fact, in in, um, in issue four, they steal the Impala from a bar. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have that um, happening. But also we changed a lot of things for ourselves. Like the, the angels aren't. The angels are in their own body they don't have to have hosts um right. and some of the demons the lesser demons do they have to have hosts um the higher demons like asmin doesn't he's you know a jerk all on his own um but our vampires now to not piss off supernatural people and to be a little bit different we have subspecies of vampires so um we call them clotters and it's because their heart beats every six hours to prevent uh clotting completely and rigor mortis 
So um, when you cut them, it's a lot grosser because you've got this clotted, you know, disgusting mess. Um, so yeah, back going for you. But to kill them, you have to chop off their heads or fire. And um, also, if they don't feed directly from humans for too long, they start to deteriorate and decompose. Mostly because we're zombie people, so we love the decomposing. Right. <laughs> um, but they also have like a hive mind. And when one tastes the blood of somebody, they can all track them wherever they go. Um, so you have to destroy that hive to keep, you know, to get away from them completely. And if one's destroyed, they will just continue to hunt you down. Um, and then that's kind of like the revenge thing going on. So we have that little unique thing going on, um, which we like. So that actually, they get introduced in issue four. Um, they actually have a fight in uh, in a department store, so <laughs> so it should be should be fun to do that one. Um, it kind of I just realized that the issue starts with a bar fight and ends with a vampire fight, so, <laughs> so there's a fight on each end. Um, our story is never boring. It pretty much starts off crazy. Um, in issue one, you know, uh, the two characters are reunited after being separated for ten years, thinking that each other was dead. During the ten years, he trained as an assassin. She trained as a supernatural hunter. And then they got tricked into meeting in this town where they merged it with hell. It's kind of like Silent Hill. So like mm -hmm. the whole town is like enclosed and they can't get out. And, and that's their goal is to try to get out while their fathers are trying to catch. And they don't know their fathers are there. They're kind of watching them and manipulating their everything, both sides. But their main goal is to get the weapon, which she was created out of. And the only way to get it is to kill her in a certain ritual, which they keep trying to do. So their goal is pretty much to survive. Um, and now they're the characters are soulmates. They have been through multiple lives together, which the prequel does um, the, 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 la the latest prequel is them meeting in this life, how they first met. Um, but the prequel will eventually go back further on how the angel and the, the demon first met and how th she was created for the weapon and all that stuff. And uh, it'll show them through multiple lives like every hundred years so you, you're going to have them in the viking errors and the medieval time errors and they get to go and i get to learn the languages for each one because that'll be interesting to see um, how to do that um but this is uh we're upset that the never-ending story title was taken because i can tell you this has got lots of stories going on we just keep coming up with ideas and once we're like oh we're never going to come up we're never going to beat this idea and then the next day we're like oh but we could do this and so we really enjoy that we're still writing it back and forth and um I mean, I could sit down and write 6,000 words in like three hours. It just blows out. I don't even have to think about anything, <laughs> which is nice. So it's good to have. And uh, so, yeah, so the, the the first one's a little chaotic. They're trapped in the town. So you've got hellhounds. You've got zombie mermen. You have ghosts. You have the zombified Anubis. A um, couple of zombies running around, skeletons, all that fun stuff. And then it kind of evens out a little bit, but it never actually slows down. It's just not as not as chaotic as going through those initial merging with hell things. So different. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a whole <laughs> you know, lot. It's, pretty chaos. it's got the name right in there. So you can't blame me. We warned you. It, it sounds like more so what happened at the end of what a cabin in the woods. <laughs> when yeah. they got released, all the different uh, her creatures. Love that movie. <laughs> yes, that is an awesome movie. All right. Yeah. Quick question. You talk about zombies a bit off topic, but all right. Your top five zombie movies. Um, oh, so I, I just saw the Pope in the back. <laughs> so, you know, it's not really fair because it, uh, Resident Evil was my favorite game of all time and they kind of screwed up the movies. Oh, so, nice. yeah, as an independent, not to the video game, you know, the first one was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was good it, in its own. It didn't have any of my characters. So I waited like what, six years at that point to see my movie. And it's like, where are my characters? Um, I just saw Train to Busan, so you yes, say it, great. and that was amazing. Yes. Um, so that's definitely the top. Um, I love Zombieland a lot. I, I like do as well. Hair. Yeah, I like that. Um, Shaun of the Dead, though, you know, <laughs> have to give my props to Shaun of the Dead. I, I loved Shaun of the Dead. Um, of course, Night of the Living Dead, you can't not like that. So I don't even know how many that is. How many is that? Is that five? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's a lot. It, yeah, you know, is, there's so many great ones. You can't go wrong. Like I love Dawn of the Dead. I like Land of the Dead because they did something different with the evolving. Yes. So yes. yeah, I really like that. And I thought that was very interesting. And you didn't know which side to choose because you're like, well, let them live and do their thing. But you're like, well, they are humans. So <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of. But yeah, so you really can't go wrong. I 
I think it would, be, it would have been easier to say which ones I don't like. And I, like I said, I just, I'm mad at any fan based movie that they don't do the characters justice. I mean, that is like, like Leon was panning off of Ada. I mean, he, he liked her, but it wasn't that kind of, I mean, he was like a puppy dog in that freaking movie. Right. So, and he's my favorite. I mean, I have a doll that I had made in Japan back in the nineties from that. Uh, he has. I had the jacket, which, by the way, from Resident Evil 4, which weighed a ton. Like, I couldn't actually wear it. <laughs> and it was like, I think it weighed, like, it had to weigh at least 25 pounds. Like, the thing was, like, solid. But, yeah, you can't go wrong with, with zombies. Our book three is all zombies. It's pretty much how Resident Evil should have been. Like, they're trapped in a city. Right. And you've got experiments. And the experiments from the labs are from their blood. They don't know it, but the, there's uh, they're all from their blood. So it's still experiments, but they're a little bit weirder and a little crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with zombies. Everyone loves them. I, so. I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, it's interesting because I wasn't a zombie fan early on in my, my horror days. And I think what screwed me up was um, <laughs> Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, I saw that at the... I was nine... It gave me nightmares for two weeks. <laughs> um, it was about like third grade or whatever it was then. So yeah. it, was, it was what eighty seven. Gave yeah. me nightmares for two weeks. And mind you, I I watched so many horror movies, slasher movies, everything, and then so it scared me for the longest time from zombie movies. But in between, then I had watched Return to Me, Night of Living Dead, both the original and the remake, and even Return of Living Dead Part Two. But there was something about that movie. Flash forward nine years later, I'm 18. Yeah. Freshman year in college, and it's such how old it is. Local video store in the town with the school and VHS tapes. I'm standing there. I look down, and there's a copy of Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> 18 year old me had a shiver go up his spine. <laughs> That's great. Fast forward two months later, or three months, it was like Christmas time. I am now watching it on a sci-fi channel. And I'm like, I was scared of this. <laughs> I'm laughing the whole time. I'm like, this movie is amazing. I can't believe it scared me. So like, because of that, that is now one of my favorite zombie movies of Good. all time. And I got out and Dawn of the Dead as well. I was like, of course. so I, I totally get it. I, I totally get it. It's so many good <laughs> ones, so, so many bad ones as well. But yeah, when characters aren't done justice, especially adaptations, I, I, I that is a big pet peeve that i have as well in resident evil for some reason i don't know why and i did a rant on this after the, the netflix show came out how hard is it to get this right it's, right? Literally, it's literally right there i yeah. don't understand how hollywood consistently gets resident evil wrong when there is like you can watch playthroughs of people going right. like there's the movie right there but like the tone, the atmosphere, everything. Like, how how do you get this? It's the wrong? easiest one to get right. Like the, really the characters is. are so easy. They're not hard to find actors that look like them. It, yeah. I mean, it, it's got a clear cut story that you can totally manipulate. And you know the the well, what was it? Welcome to Raccoon City. Right. So it had the characters right, pretty much. I don't know why they. I never understand why they switch stupid things. Like they changed where Brad went or, or whatever they did. Um, it would have been a good movie, but they they shoved like Resident Evil 1 and 2 into one movie, and you didn't have to do that. They could have done, if they wanted to do both of them, start with Resident Evil 2 and just kind of flash back to like Resident Evil 1, like going into the movie. But they, they literally jammed both in there for whatever reason. Um, and I mean, the characters were, were better than the other ones. I mean, they did a couple of weird things, but um, they killed off someone that, I think they didn't die last time. I don't know. They did some things, but they they tried. They tried to be fan base. I just feel like they tried to do way too much at once, and that's what kind of messed it up. Because right. my husband didn't know the games at all, and he had no idea what was going on in the movies. He's like, "Who are these people? What are they doing?" I was like, "Yeah, it's a lot going around. I don't I don't know about the orphanage thing, but I guess they never really talked about that in in Resident Evil the game. I mean, I know Chris raised her." I, 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 I RP'd Claire for 15 years. That's who I was RPing. Mostly okay. so I can write with the Leon because I thought that they should be together for the longest time, but they just they just refused to do it. But uh, yeah, the characters were great. I just, I actually started with Resident Evil 2 in the weirdest way possible. 
I don't know if you remember the commercials when they first came out with Resident Evil 2. I didn't even have yeah. PlayStation. I saw the crocodile come out of the sewer and try to get Leon. And for whatever reason, I cannot tell you why, that made me want to play. I told my parents that whatever holiday is coming up, I need PlayStation. I think it's PlayStation 1. I need it. I need to get it. So we went out and got it. We rented the game. No instructions with the rental game. Right. I'm sitting there trying to play this character. Leon keeps walking into the fire. I'm like, this is the stupidest game ever. Throw the controller. My brother comes in the room. He's the gamer. He would play Zelda and all those games. Right. He picks it up, starts playing like it's nothing. I kick him out of the room. And then I got to play. And then I finally bought that game. And I remember because I bought that game and Final Fantasy VII on the same day. Like, that, those are the two I bought. And then I realized in the instructions that there's an automatic aim. <laughs> and I was so mad. I was like, what? But that was it. I was hooked. Resident Evil 2 got me hooked. I went and got one, which wasn't as good in my opinion. I mean, it had a lot of keys. <laughs> I mean, right. you barely leave the mansion. But the games were just, I was just hooked. And then Resident Evil 4 came out, and that was even... That was awesome. And they just redid Resident Evil 4, and it looks the same to me. <laughs> like, it doesn't... I was going to ask you about that, since you mentioned about the jacket. Were you interested in picking up the remake? Because it was... I was watching the demo. It, it just well, came... I think week. 2 came out. Remake for 2 came out. I, I didn't I didn't get it. I was I watched some of the demos and all that, yeah, but I, I haven't played games in forever. And okay. then um, I just saw, two days ago, the demo played for Resident Evil 4. Right. And and in my opinion, they it looked it didn't look that much different. You know what I mean? I, I'm glad I'm not the only one because I th th that was one of the things about when they did a remake for two and three. I'm like, oh, this is like this looks, you know, it's a remarkably different from what yeah. they did. You know, especially switching the camera and everything. Well, the characters look amazing. Or I'm like, they don't really look good. I don't really like it. Looks up. I don't see a big I don't see a big need or difference no. compared to look the same what had been done before. Yeah, yeah it I don't, I don't know. And in, and in the demo they killed the wolf. I don't know why. I mean that was my favorite part, having the wolf come in. Oh, it, I mean, he sounded like an idiot. I was like, oh, it's the wolf. But um I, I love that. But um I, I don't know why. I was watching it being played, I was like, this doesn't it all looks the same. I mean, I don't know. It didn't all I remember though, the original so um there was when the original demo came out for RE4, I got to play it because I, of course, the guys at the the the, the game store love me because it's you know I was in there all the time. So they gave me the demo. I get home and I'm <laughs> I'm playing this game and I was so excited. I finally got into the first house and I'm like snipering people from the window, not realizing that I just got killed by the chainsaw and I screamed so loud. That my boyfriend at the time was like, what's going on? I was like, I got killed by James. So it was like, I just, I was thinking it couldn't get in. I had the dresser in front of there and right. I was so excited. But, but yeah, I loved Resident Evil 4. Um, now I should play Resident Evil. I, I feel like Resident Evil 2 remade was, it, it should have been done like 10 years ago. Like I wanted it so bad for the longest time. Um, and Resident Evil 1 redone was great too. I mean, so much better, you know, um, cutscenes and everything and and all that stuff but yeah four to me look the i'm glad you said it because i i mean i'm i was just like am i going crazy like i even said it yeah, in the it, screen i was like they look yeah. the same yeah, it doesn't I, look that big of an upgrade to me either yeah. maybe maybe the um environment looks a little different but it's still i mean to me leon looked exactly the same so right. i don't know maybe i'm imagining it wrong maybe i had it in my head that it was better than it was, i don't know but I, I like the original, so it's not just you. All right. Well, before I let you go, <laughs> let everyone know when your Kickstarter for issue four is happening. Okay, so issue four will be released April eighteenth. You can go to the pre-launch now. Um, all you have to do is search "Worthy Chaos" on Kickstarter. We're the only thing that pops up. Um, it's going to be released April eighteenth, but it's also going to have one through three with it, which you can do as an add-on, or you can get a higher tier, or whatever you want. So you can you can catch up there. We also have the PDFs, which for $15, you get all four. So you can do that. And you get the color version and the uh, black and white version in the PDFs. So um, you get that. So, And we've got a lot of cool tiers. We've got the, the plushie. We have some statues. We've got pillows. We love merch. So we, we buy it for us, and it's tax deductible to sell it to you guys. So <laughs> that's really how that worked out. So, so but yeah. yeah. Where can everybody find Where the Chaos on the Net? 
Okay, so you can find us on Twitter. We're at Worthy Chaos, um, or uh, also on Facebook. We're at Worthy Chaos, and we also have a website that's WorthyChaosComics.com, and you can buy the PDFs off of there for one through three now. Uh, and we have the uh, printed versions there, and some keychains and stickers, and I think we've got hoodies and stuff and all on there. So um, you can pretty much find us anywhere. Just search Worthy Chaos, and we'll pop up. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Carissa. I appreciate it, and good luck to you in your next Kickstarter. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Be sure to check out Worthy Chaos Redemption, issue number four, when the Kickstarter drops, April 18th. And let's talk about the fragrance of the week. Now, a few, a week or so ago, uh, in relation to YouTube, I dropped a video where I visited the Black American market. And I sampled some of the black owned fragrances, which they sold at the store. And I want to talk about one of those fragrances today. And it is Ola Zion, number 23 or number 23 by Ola Zion. It comes in a 60 ml bottle and it retails on their site for 100 bucks. But in store, it retailed for 50. Now, this one has listed notes of it says it's an original scent with a rich tobacco smell and undertones of cinnamon this cologne competes with the best of them i didn't get much of a tobacco anything when i first smelled this fragrance i did get that cinnamon uh that cinnamon really roared it was it was muted but still potent and sweet it reminded me of like a softer fireball uh either the whiskey or the candy whichever one you're familiar with uh, but I really enjoyed that. But then as that cinnamon faded, I got this sweetness. I got this scent that was very familiar. And it reminded me of Baccarat Rouge 540. Uh, and I was surprised simply because of the note listing. I was expecting really some a richer tobacco, uh, more or less like a maybe as a horror of tobacco especially based on the note description or note breakdown or maybe even something a little harsher uh, like tobacco bars from authenticity but no nah, this was straight up like Zaharov not Zaharov Baccarat Rouge 540 and it is one that again I have no issues with that whatsoever it just wasn't what I was expecting and this bad boy lasts a long time it has been over a week since I sprayed the business card I used um to test the sample because they didn't have any test strips there that business card is potent a week plus later that smell lingers even in the store when i sprayed it i can tell that that fragrance has monster projection and monster longevity and honestly at the price of 50 dollars in store that's a hell of a deal i'm not sure about a hundred at that price point you really have to judge yourself and see if you feel like that's a worthwhile price for what you're getting. I think it's a quality fragrance from what I've seen so far, but really that's going to be up to you, your nose and your wallet. So that's my take on number 23 by Old Zion. So, so what, what am I wearing today? today? Nothing, Nothing special, special. Just, just a fragrance oil inspired, inspired by diesel, diesel when you keep, keep it light, light. Fresh, fresh not, not too overpowering especially, especially with my current condition, condition. Some, some fragrances were irritating, irritating me uh, based, based on the congestion, congestion and the way i was feeling the other day, day. so i wanted, I wanted to, take to take it a bit lighter, lighter today. today but, but that's, that's my take, take on those let's, let's talk, talk about how you can support the channel, the channel. I thank, thank you always for, for listening and supporting through this episode 146 of the Satori Geek Podcast. Uh, make, make sure you know that we also have a Patreon. You can sign up for a little price, just one dollar a month, to be a producer at the producer, associate producer, and an executive producer. Uh, tiers one dollar, three dollars, and five dollars. You get access to early podcasts as well as video and audio, audio material, material that you will not find anywhere else on the web also feel free to use my link 
at Pete and Pedro. Either the E-Hawks 10 or the link show notes. I really enjoy their fragrances. Particularly, I've talked about Billion too many times to count so far. Uh, their fragrances in general are still some of the best value you can find uh, on the market. 50 ml for 50 bucks. Uh, now, now as well, well as their grooming and other hair care products. products. Also, get, get 10% off, off your, your first purchase using the code EHAWKS10. Of course, the link, the link in the show notes. notes. And, of and of course, you're trying, trying to find some different models, sugar-laden energy drinks. drinks. Check, Check out W. w. Get, get 10%, 10 off, off your first purchase, purchase today, today by, by using the code WEBSMAN or... Again, that, that link, link in the show notes. notes. And, and you, you can, can find me everywhere, everywhere around the web. I'm on multiple, multiple cat podcasts. podcasts. Outside, Outside of this one, one you can catch, catch me over at the, the NMW Nerds of the World twice, twice a week. week. One, one with my man Brian Sapp talking about, about all things new releases of video games with the, the NMW Checkpoint. And then you can also catch me with the legend for VIP as well as Sean Longo talking about wrestling with the K Baby Baby, the ring, the, the NRW ring general podcast every week as well. So check, check me out there. Check me out on social media, on Instagram. It's, it's Web Style and Social Toogie. And Twitter is just, just Web Style. And on TikTok, TikTok is underscore Web Style. Also, remember, you can find anything, anything and everything that is Web Style at webstyle.com. And don't get Send us an email. email. Check, Check us out. out. Info, Info at webstyle.com. Now, again, I thank, thank you for your time. I thank, thank you for your time. Here, remember, stay, stay safe, safe out there, there and be blessed. Like. Must I remind you it was till on your birthday? Don't get me wrong, I think we killed in the birthdays. And you picked the hell of fit for the church day. Let's say you picked the risk game for it. Kill it. Now you got the floor filled with bras that you purchase. Pick a color scheme that can match the berry corset. Get the berry cream. 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 Get the Take a hint, though. Don't try to get me at a moment. No oh. mint, though. Smoking hot, rocking this pen. So oh. thin, tie hairline, looking like a stint. So oh. pimp, no lie, I'm sharper than the utensil. Oh. And stroke, mental, plain dang, homie. I was hoping we could walk out with that bang, bang, honey. Bang, See them plain Jane's funny, bang, them bang, lame friends funny. Bang, we tell it fit crazy like I think came bang, on me. Hey, hey homie, look a lady, main thing. Want me on the scene, fit popping like a main vein. Running blood color, lips smashing with the hand. Clutch money, holding back. Kinda funny, can you tell me what's the price I got the range rover? Hang on me, we walking, looking Gucci like that thing sprayed on me. Walking with a lip like an ankle sprang on me. Yeah, I rocked the card again. She don't really want me because one man should have all that style. Take it out, clothes on the floor, pass it. And the one girl should fit it all in them jeans. So take it up and let me see what's under them scenes. No one man should have all that style. Take it out, clothes on the floor, pass it. Styling, take it off, clothes on the floor, pal. And the one girl should fit it all in them jeans. So take it off and let me see what's under them scenes. Oh, you want to? Oh, I completely read that wrong.